10 mysterious places in the United States. Apparently, there's going to be some scary places in America. So this is going to be interesting. Before we do jump in this, I appreciate you guys clicking that subscribe button down below. And if you guys do want to help support further, I do have a Patreon page. Link is in the description. But yeah, let's jump into this and check out these mysterious places. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the world according to Briggs, your virtual tour guide. Today we're taking a trip to some of the most mysterious places in the United States. There's uh, a lot of different types of mysterious places. Some are natural, others are man-made, maybe haunted, aliens, some have secrets, while others just can't be explained. For whatever what? reason, mysteries and mysterious places always grab our attention. The unknown is of very course. interesting to most people. Today's video is about some of the most mysterious locations in the United States. We have some great ones, and I gotta tell you, as I researched this video, I kept finding more and more locations with really cool things to talk about. Some that would be a good setting for a horror game. I ain't gonna lie. This right here. Some are only known locally. And in those cases, it's hard to find a lot of details and things like pictures and video. But really, it's sort of true with some of the ones on this list when it comes to video. So we might be dealing with a lot of pictures and aerial uh, shots of the area, not the specific location. We'll do what we can. Okay, let's get rolling. We'll see what made the list. Number right, 10, it. Ringing Rock Park, Pennsylvania. Just across the Delaware River from Milford, New Jersey in Pennsylvania, you'll find the Ringing Rock Park. This is a 128-acre park in Bucks County, Pennsylvania that has a large field of mysterious boulders that, when struck, sound like bells, as if they're hollow oh, or made of metal. They oh. don't sound like rocks at all. Only about a third of the rocks ring, and they call those their live rocks. And Nah, that's actually creepy, though. Like, if you're, like, kind of alone or just with, like, a couple people and you're in these woods, forests... Are you here like bells ringing? Oh, hell no. I am gone, bro. I am gone. And those that don't are known as dead rocks. At least they thought they were dead. In 1965, a group of scientists crushed, broke, sanded, sliced, and had lunch on the rocks. After huh? performing numerous tests and a series of lunch dates that resulted in one hookup, they found out that all the rocks actually do ring. The dead ones ring at tones lower than the human ear can actually pick up. Oh, Any dog what? from the area would have said, I told you so, if they were able to talk. Scientists <laughs> have determined that the stones are made of a volcanic substance called diabase. I think I pronounced that right. But there's no no explanation for the eight acre field being situated on a hillside not at the bottom of a hill or a valley where you would normally find a rock field or something like this That's each so summer weird. hundreds of visitors flock here with hammers in hand to perform their own rock concert <laughs> yes <laughs> comedy gold yo before we get further into this you guys gotta let me know if you've been anywhere like if you've been to these places or if you've been anywhere near or even if you live near the but you haven't gone number nine energy vortexes sedona arizona when most people hear the name sedona they think of sedona oh, wow, arizona beautiful. and its amazing redstone rock formations yeah, i think of a foreign student named sedona in the sixth grade that whipped me with a jump rope not saying i was into it but i do miss her anyway <laughs> sedona is also known as a spiritual hot spot not just for the native americans from the area hippies and your average joe that read one too many books on personal growth find their way here to admire the landscape and get a quick energy boost. The energy right. vortexes people claim can boost healing, give mystical enlightenment, huh? and a general feeling of well-being. Now, this is due to a strong energy produced by these vortexes. Even the trees here twist in a very unusual way. A lot of people claim it's the energy vortexes. What? This is also a hot spot for the yoga types to have retreats. People point out those twisted trees and they start having little yoga sessions around them. Wait, is this true? So, I... If any of you guys have been here, have you gone away feeling better? Well, I would definitely feel better because, like, you're looking in this beautiful area, you know what I mean? But, like, do you feel better within yourself? Kind of, I don't know. They want to twist themselves like the tree or whatever, but they're trying to gather the energy from these vortexes. The four main ah. vortexes in Sedona are the Airport Mesa Vortex, Boynton, I believe it's called Canyon Vortex, Bell Rock Vortex, Cathedral Rock Vortex. The origin and the nature of these vortexes still remain a mystery. Number eight, Coral Weird. Castle, Homestead, Florida. In Homestead, Florida stands a remarkable structure that was created because of a broken heart. Lat Wait, that looks like a Saturn. The, the, the planet in the ring. An immigrant, Edward Leeds Skulkin, built the Coral Castle in Homestead, Florida after his fiance left him on the eve of their wedding. The mysterious thing about the castle isn't why Edward built it, it's how Edward built it. Edward was a small man. He was five foot tall and maybe weighed 100 pounds. And he didn't use anything other than homemade tools. Right. There was no electrical devices. He didn't get any help. He did it by himself with homemade tools. Did a broken heart give this little man the strength and drive to build the castle? He built it by himself using a thousand tons of boulders, some of the boulders weighing as much 
much as 30 tons alone. It's documented that no one ever witnessed Edward working on the castle. Some have said that he used supernatural power. Leedskulkin would only say that he knew the secrets used to build the ancient pyramids. He said that he learned the secrets of making objects weightless. Re what? Yo, this is getting weird, bro. Because first of all, the pyramids. The pyramids is a crazy story as, as anyway. So this this little guy is saying he, he's figured out the secret of how they built the pyramids and he can make them weightless. Bro, yo, he's levitating things, man. He's levitating. Them. Researchers and historians say whatever he was doing had something to do with this little black box seen in photos that he had mounted on a tripod crane he had built out of logs. Nobody knows what's in the box or what? why it's affixed to these tripods, but most feel it holds the answers how he created this place. Lead Skulkin died in 1950, and we'll never know. Nobody knows anything about the black box. Bro, so we didn't go get the box? Yo, if I heard in town there's a Jedi making a castle bro i'm gonna go and take that box bro <laughs> where it went what was in it that's the biggest mystery of this whole thing it still stands to this day number seven the trans allegheny what? lunatic asylum weston west virginia in 1864 the trans allegheny lunatic asylum started accepting patients okay. if you've ever visited west virginia you could imagine there was a line out the door for people looking to get in at first everything was fine and dandy people were getting the help they needed at least help for the time i right. mean lobotomies and electric shock have long you know <laughs> been deemed unnecessary but hey, it was cutting edge back then. As what, is that what they used to do back then? Like literally just uh, electrocute them and stuff? Like let you shot? As the years went on, it started getting more and more patients that far exceeded what it was originally designed for. By the 1950s, the facility that was designed to hold 250 patients had 2,400 patients. That is what? about the time it really hit the fan. The asylum became something out of a horror movie. No heat in the winters, sweltering summers, people sleeping on- Yo, but I don't even want to pause it, bro. This is freaking me out. Like this right here. Hell oh, no. Right. <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to go here with a grip. I, I, I played it. On the floors and in storage rooms, unexplained disappearances, caging, and severe mistreatment of some of the patients. At some point, attacks on the staff became the norm, and patients started making fires in an attempt to burn the place down. And get this, in true West Virginia fashion, it wasn't shut down until 1994. Yeah, so we're talking from 1950 to 1994. This thing was a total nightmare, and they kept it open. But it's what? believed that it's still inhabited by the the souls of the patients. If you want to check it out yourself, is that holes in the floor? Take a ghost tour of the facilities. Nah, yeah, nah, they have those. Nah. Number six. Yo, <laughs> don't do that, bro. Don't do that, bro. Don't do that, bro. Don't, don't, don't do that. Skinwalker Ranch, Utah. The name Skinwalker Ranch can warn you of two different things. Supernatural hoodoo voodoo weirdness or a nudist colony filled with retirees. If you're like me, you're probably struggling with deciding which one is scarier. Luckily for us, this is the supernatural type and we can press on. Okay. Supernatural and mysterious activities have been reported at the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah for many years. Visitors to the 480 acre compound have reported seeing shape-shifting creatures and hearing loud underground noises along with the occasional floating orb of death. Now, I huh? added the death part for dramatic effect. Oh, I was gonna say. <laughs> Yo, he's just out here just adding on a death part to it, bro. Flowing up. Okay, okay, no, I'm dead. <laughs> just so you know. According to Native American lore, the site is full of evil spirits and dark spiritual energy. The ranch has been nicknamed the UFO Ranch because of its 50-year history of odd events that are said to have had taken place there. But oh, that 50-year wow. thing is what's documented. There are many stories and legends about early settlers and the Ute people from the nearby reservation experiencing strange events in the area. All in all, the Skinwalker Ranch is creepy as hell. Number five, the White Eagle Saloon, Portland, Oregon. Here in the Portland, saloon? Oregon, we have the White Eagle Saloon and its checkered past. Originally a hub for Portland's Polish immigrants, the White Eagle Saloon wore many hats over the years. Right. Saloon, meeting hall, hotel, a place of worship, brothel, and now it's a great bar with great live music. The name White Eagle is in reference to the not too bad. old Polish flag which had a white eagle on it. This place has some serious stories. A prostitute killed by a jealous lover, people dragged through basement tunnels, a waitress carried down basement steps by an invisible force. These are the stories and legends that pop up whenever the White Eagle is mentioned. What? The details normally become more graphic and gruesome as the years go on. What? And it's still open now? 
There's more than just good storytelling going on here. Ghost hunters who have investigated the place report a sensation of violence and death in the basement and a deep well of sadness on the second floor. The White what? Eagle first popped up in the waterfront of Portland in 1905. At the time, the area was crowded with hundreds of recent arrivals from Great Britain, Scandinavia, the Balkans, Russia, the Mediterranean, and the Far East. They worked on the docks, in the Union Pacific Railroad shops, and in the neighboring factories and mills built along the Willamette's east bank. You know what? It would actually be interested to know. Let me know in the comment section how many of you guys would actually like to go on like ghost tours, check out abandoned places, like like go to creepy areas like th th that basement. Because and how many would you not? Because I definitely wouldn't, bro. I'll be actually terrified. But I feel like I'd be surprised at how many people would. When the workday ended, people filled Russell Street and it became alive as people walked down it and then disappeared into dozens of bars lining the street. There was a trolley line that ran up Mississippi Avenue and stopped at Russell Street near the White Eagle. Upon the approach to Russell Street, the conductor would always yell, next stop, bucket of blood, a nickname earned from all the fierce and frequent brawls that erupted in and around the saloon. My, Two Polish immigrants opened up the White Eagle to offer other Polish immigrants a place after work for recreation, pool, poker, liquor, beer, and with the right connection and the proper amount of money, patrons could indulge in the brothel upstairs or the opium den downstairs. The basement had a tunnel connected to the underground network leading to the waterfront. Legend has it that through the subterranean passageway, intoxicated patrons were knocked over the head and drugged down the tunnels to the ships. There are reports of a woman crying what? upstairs and people screaming in the basement after hours. This place is spooky. I went in there before I knew it was all haunted and everything like that. I haven't been back since. Number oh, four. yeah, bro. I, I ain't stepping foot in that place. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't know what, what White Eagle is called. I, bro, when I go to America, if I see a place called White Eagle, I'm not going in there. Not going in there, bro. The Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, Los Angeles. Now, wait. Is this rings a bell? Is this the, um, the hotel where there was a documentary about a woman was missing and she was found in like the water canisters? Is that the same? Bro, this ho if it is the same one, this hotel is creepy. Now, growing up in the Los Angeles area, you yeah. knew that this place was creepy. There's tons of- She was fighting like the- oh. Stories. Almost every Hollywood murder seems to be in or around this place, even if it wasn't. They always seem to end up here. It's how legends go, I guess. The hotel was built in 1926 in what is known as the golden era of Los Angeles architecture, and it was named after the 26th president of the United States, Theodore Roosevelt. It is right. a beautiful building. I've seen it many, many times. Never been inside, but I've driven by and been in the area, and it's a beautiful building. It was actually the model of the Disneyland ride Tower of Terror. The place is haunted. It okay. is said that Marilyn Monroe still haunts the halls here and still occupies her suite of 1200. A lot of guests that have stayed- Oh, wait. What, did Marilyn Monroe stay there? Well, I'm guessing so, right? There say that they see Marilyn Monroe in the mirror in that room. Nah. Guests have also reported mysterious trumpet music that's believed to be played by the spirit of Montgomery Cliff. Now, I don't know if they've ever tracked him down and found the ghost playing the trumpet and asked him who he was, but people are pretty sure it's Montgomery Cliff. I guess he used to like to practice in Sweet 928. Others involve a little girl in a blue dress named Caroline that tries to motion you down the hallway, and if you go down the hallway, she wants to show you her dead parents, which she killed with a, a sharpened candy cane, like a preteen prison shank. Just kidding, I made that part up. But anyway. Oh. This guy, he's having too much fun with this video, bro. People have seen this little girl in blue dress and they do uh. know her name's Caroline. Another thing that's kind of weird is the hotel operator calls and asks if you need help in your room. And then they call back downstairs and nobody called the room. It's just weird. Wait. Number three. Wait, that happens? And then they call back downstairs and nobody called the room. Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. Oh, no, 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 no. Bro, before this video... I would be staying away from Roosevelt Hotel anyway, right? But there's just no way. There's no way. Yo, is anyone actually stayed here that you guys know? No, bro. It's just weird. Number three, the Taoist Hum. 
Taos, New Mexico. Some residents and visitors in Taos, New Mexico have for years That's been cool. hearing a mysterious and faint hum that they can't seem to get away from. One lady said she tried listening to the Bee Gees for 24 hours straight to drown out the sound. She said it didn't work, but what? now she hums staying alive whenever she's trying to concentrate and her neighbors hate her. What's weird about this one is only about 2% of Taos residents and visitors report hearing the sound. Some believe it's caused by an unusual acoustics of the desert surroundings. They also think it's just delusional people. Some think it's a secret <laughs> government mind control program. Conspiracies are many and conclusions are few. Right. It has been described as a whirl, a hum, a buzz, and whether it's psychological, natural, or supernatural, no one has yet been able to locate the sound and its origin and anything about it. This is what it sounds like. A couple years back, they did a... Okay, that's weird. That, bro, I, I I feel like I've just been, like, mind-controlled right now. Bro, that is weird. And if, like, if I go there, there's a chance that I'll actually hear that. Nah, that's weird, bro. What would that be? A survey of people who heard the hum, and they all described it differently, which would indicate that it's more subjective than objective or completely nonsense. Either way, the unexplained noises are creepy. Yeah. Number two, 100%. the East Bay Walls, Northern California. Up in the East Bay Hills near San Francisco, there's a series of rock walls that have fascinated people for well over 100 years. Uh -huh. The East Bay Walls are also known as the Berkeley Walls, in case you do some research and get, think you're looking at two different things. You're not. They are strange and a total mystery. Nobody knows who built them, why they built them, or what purpose did they serve. They're a meter high and a meter wide in places. The walls are anywhere from a few meters to over a mile long. Some rocks are the size of long. a basketball, while others are large boulders weighing more than a ton. Parts of the wall oh, look wow. like they were just thrown together while other parts look like they were carefully constructed. The age of the walls is unknown, but it appears to experts that they were put in place anywhere from 150 to 500 years ago. Oh, wow. That's a big difference. So much about these walls is mystery, and it's up for debate. One thing you learn once you start digging into these walls is they have fascinated people for a very long time. The Oakland Tribune had a story about the walls on October 15th of 1916, where they mentioned people have been guessing and investigating these walls for many years. No yeah, but anything can happen. Like, what's so, like, crazy about these walls, though? Because anyone could put them together, right? Surely. Like, around that time. No actual date there. Anyway, people have speculated that it was Chinese explorers that may have gotten here many years before Europeans landed on the East Coast. I think that one's kind of just because they had the Great Wall and, you know, right. they figured Chinese just build walls. That's an old, <laughs> old theory. Other theories okay. went on about a lost civilization. I went down the rabbit hole while researching this, and probably the easiest explanation and most realistic is ranching. Maybe these walls were in place to control the movement of sheep or cattle. But yeah, that makes holes sense. appear in that theory as well. It's like, why aren't any of them square or connected so that it keeps everything in? They're just all walls, it seems like. Uh. One thing is for sure, we don't know how, we don't know who, and we don't know why. And it'll probably remain that way for ever. Yo, maybe someone back in the day was trying to make like, uh, they was gonna make like a, like a, like a castle or a road, and then they just scrapped the idea. Maybe, maybe it's not like built. And number one, underwater Stonehenge, Lake Michigan. Everybody has heard of Stonehenge in the UK. It's yeah, I was gonna say, is that in the UK? Huh? You, you guys go what in America? Most visited places in England. Right. If you don't count the pub. Did you know we sort of have our own here in the United States? Most people will never visit it because it's 40 feet under Lake Michigan. What? One of these stones that's in the underwater Stonehenge has a carving of a mastodon or Snuffleupagus from Sesame Street. I was on the fence on which one it is, but I'm sort of leaning towards Snuffleupagus. Not many people have visited this one, including myself, because it's underwater. So there isn't a lot of footage of this one, and the footage they do have isn't great. So here's the pictures. And then I'm going to show you some drone footage of Lake Michigan while I talk. The best explanation as to how these got here. It, there's a lot of different explanations. The structure could have been created during the last ice age when the lake bed was dry. They figure it was some sort of game drive, which is a structure that's been used throughout history to drive herding animals towards hunters. That's right. also one of the theories for the East Bay walls at number two on this list. For whatever reason, there's a circular structure with apparently a mastodon on it in Lake Michigan, 40 feet underwater, which is just weird. Many people, however, question whether the rocks were purposely placed or it's just a random occurrence. But there's also one that's very similar in Lake Huron. So yeah, I don't think it's random myself. 
It doesn't we, look like uh, we'll ever know the origins of this Stonehenge, or at least until Snuffleupagus spills the beans. <laughs> Either way, we'll probably never find out. Oh. Bro, there's actually so many like weird things that's on this planet that we just don't know. And it'd be so interesting to find out. Like, so interesting. You guys gotta let me know if you've been to any of those places, you live near them or whatnot. But yeah, great video, enjoyed that. Hopefully you guys enjoyed as well. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv forward slash L3WG. If you guys wanna check me out there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.